Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 651 days, Ukraine stands strong against the forces of the Russian invasion. Yesterday, Ukraine marked the Day of Armed Forces and St. Nicholas Day, which for the first time coincided as Ukraine's Orthodox Church switched to the Western calendar. The Air Force of Ground Forces of Ukraine released a moving video on how the military and St. Nicholas work together to deliver presents to the Ukrainian children. President of Ukraine Volodymyr Zelensky released a selfie video of him walking through the capital of Ukraine towards the Wall of Remembrance of the Fallen for Ukraine, saying hello to ordinary citizens. The president thanked all those who fight and defend the country. He said that ahead is the liberation of Ukraine's people in the occupied territories, and then there is no alternative to that, no alternative to victory. He said that St. Nicholas will come to those who behaved well, and the armed forces of Ukraine to those who behaved badly. In his evening video address, the head of state informed that he signed several decrees on the occasion of the Day of the Armed Forces. In total, more than 700 warriors received state awards. Zelensky also visited a military hospital to thank the doctors and support the guys recovering from wounds. Quote, I am grateful and proud of all the military doctors of Ukraine, all our combat medics, all the nurses who saved the lives of the wounded warriors, and bring them back to life after heavy attacks by the occupier." On the occasion of the St. Nicholas Day, the president also visited a children's hospital in Kyiv, Ohmadit, and the first lady visited a school that operates with a children's hospital in Zhytomyr, to the west of Kyiv. Ukraine-US Defense Industry Conference took place yesterday, reports Ukrainska Pravda. As a result, the US and Ukraine have signed a statement of intent on the joint production and exchange of technical data that will work to meet the urgent operational needs of the armed forces of Ukraine. The production will include air defense systems, repair and technical support, and production of critical ammunition. The White House believes that this will strengthen cooperation between the United States and Ukraine and facilitate faster passage of investment deals through the system. The conference brought together approximately 350 industry and government representatives from the US, Ukraine and Europe to focus on a significant increase in the production of weapons to support Ukraine's struggle for freedom against Russian aggression and to strengthen Ukraine's long-term self-defense. We would really appreciate if you could recommend us to your friends and family as well as share information on social media. This really helps more people to find the highlights of Ukraine and truth about Russia's invasion. According to Reuters sources, only 480,000 of the million artillery shells that were promised to Ukraine by EU member states by the spring of 2024 were delivered to the country, reports NV. In March, the EU developed a plan to provide Ukraine with a million artillery shells, one of the key weapons in the full-scale Russian-Ukrainian war. The EU was able to provide roughly 300,000 artillery shells from its own reserves and only 60,000 from joint purchases. Different explanations for falling behind the plan are voiced in the European Union, reports European Pravda. Some argue that a large number of EU governments have not placed orders with armament companies to support their claims of long-term support for Ukraine. Some maintain that the industry requires time to increase output. The decision to restrict the joint procurement only to EU and Norwegian companies, which France insisted upon, is also being criticized. The body of a former Ukrainian MP who betrayed his country when the full-scale invasion started and left for Russia, Ilya Kiva, was found in Moscow Oblast, reports Radio Liberty. Russia's investigative committee reported that it has launched criminal proceedings with respect to Kiva's murder. According to the media sources, the security service of Ukraine is behind the liquidation of an XMP. The traitor was eliminated with small arms. Thank you for listening to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast. We are a commercial initiative of just two people and we need your help to grow. Share information about the podcast, rate us in the app, subscribe to our Patreon. With your support, we are getting better. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine. 